Man, this is lifestyles of the poor and unfucking fortunate. But I tell you what, but 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 bitch, we got views. Chad Arms TV. We got the home slice in here, man. We've already had him on the uh, podcast before. He's getting on another episode tonight. Uh, and we him actually did a combos episode uh, back the last time he was in town. When was that, by the way? That was Ryan's concert. January. It's been that long, bro. Yeah. Hella. That's yeah, crazy. I think it was like January 7th. Because this will drop sometime in October. Yeah. So it's been like 10 months since she was here last. Yeah. That's wild that it went that fast, bro. Stupid wild. Stupid. We got Kansas Rebel Man in the building. Yep. You damn right. What's yeah. going on, y'all? Man, not much, bro. We just, uh, we're waiting on Squizzles to pull up to where we can record. We got two podcasts to record tonight. We got one we're going to do with Kansas and then one we're doing with another uh, a guest. So, but I figured, man... We could do a, a, a sit-down interview with you because we don't have one with you on the channel. Just to kind of let people know more about you if they haven't checked out the podcast before. Mm-hmm. Because we put out so many episodes. We put two out a week. And then, like you said, it was January. We've probably doubled our subscriber base since then. Oh, yeah. So, which, salute to y'all for that. But um, Killing it. We're just going to let, let the people kind of into the other, like, as far as like you go, mm-hmm. the book of, of, of Jordan, the book of, of Kansas Rebel Man, he's got a reaction channel. Um, he's a huge, huge, huge supporter of what we do, and he's part of the fan. He's part of our family, man. Like we, damn right. Um, and so let's just get right into it, man. Where where uh, where were you born and raised at? Uh, I was born in Wichita, Kansas. Um, was re- at Wesley Hospital. Uh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> shitty hospital i would not advise anybody to right. go there to give birth to a child or if you're sick fuck that don't even don't don't go yeah but uh yeah find another hospital in uh in wichita but uh uh was born in wichita wesley hospital um i grew up everywhere in kansas uh, mm-hmm. as far as uh halstead kansas it's a very very small town like yeah. One, country. yeah, super, yeah. super country. Um, you know, m- nothing but Mennonites and people who you know farm. Uh, mm-hmm. But I've, you know, I've I've gone to schools like that. I've lived out in towns like that. From that to uh, you know Kansas City. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Olathe. I've heard of it. Yeah, Olathe, Kansas. I've lived in Olathe, Kansas before. I've lived in uh, Kansas City, Missouri side. Uh, like Wyandotte area. What was it like? What was it like? Uh, say like a Kansas City. It's more like a Nashville. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. It's, and then the the country city is probably much closer to where it's probably more country than where I stay at. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd say yeah. There's definitely a big difference. Yeah. Definitely a big difference between the two. Uh, uh, even like uh, even Wichita. Wichita. You know, it's. It's the biggest city in Kansas, but people kind of run Wichita and Kansas City together because of the that line, the Missouri line and, and Kansas uh, borderline. So I always wondered how that worked because it always confused me when I would say Kansas City, Missouri, but then there's like, is it Kansas City, Kansas too? And then it's just because it's right on that yeah, state line. It you. literally, like before you hit – Kansas downtown Kansas City on the highway has that little sign on that that says the borderline of Kansas and Missouri and yeah. you're now entering Missouri so yeah uh, yeah what, what was it like growing up like what how how was your childhood would you say um so you know my 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 father wasn't there in my yeah. life in and have out you, have you ever do you have any kind of relationship with him at all? So it, it's really weird. It's, it's a weird situation because yeah. he will he only hits me up or wants to do anything you know with me or whatever when there's like a death in the family. Like the last time I seen my dad really was when his brother died and he hit me up and before that it had been years. Yeah, you know so. Not re- not really having a a father in, in in my life or in 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 the home or anything, you know. My mom, you know, she had you know boyfriends and she got married, you know. Uh, so I've had stepdads or anything, everything like that. But 
it's it's just kind of hard growing up trusting you know another another man that you don't you really don't know you know what I mean right. which is the same thing Adam was talking about in his yeah. interview yeah 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 yeah, yeah. You know? exactly exactly which he ended up that ended up being a situation where he had a good relationship with some, right. like somebody later on but like right but yeah right and so I've always you know yeah I've always had that that uh that 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 thing going on you know as a as a young boy yeah. You know, wondering where the hell is my fucking, you know, where the hell is my dad? Why the hell he had my, my basketball, football games, yeah. concerts, shit like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, but as I got, got older, you know, I just kind of, I rely on God. So mm-hmm. God is my father. It, you know, yeah. uh, I don't really seek a, a physical man father. or right, f- right. physical father figure just because yeah. it's, I'm I'm used to it. Right. I'm yeah. yeah. So So you said sports so you played sports growing up? Yes. What kind what was sports was you playing? Shoot man, I played I All played way. football, soccer, basketball. What was your uh, favorite? Golf. Uh shoot. I only played one year of high school football, believe mm-hmm. it or not. Uh my favorite would probably have to be basketball. Okay, j- cool. Just because uh my coach R.I.P. Coach Hewing, Ryan Hewing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say because basketball, because he didn't ask, you know, what, you know, did you do you have a father? Is your father in your life or whatever? He kind of just, as a basketball coach, just took on that role. And, yeah. you know, I, even though I wasn't looking for it or seeking for it, yeah. Uh, he just he played that role. I mean, we we were on a, a I was on a national championship team. Yeah. Like wh- I don't know if anybody's ever heard of Oak Hill Academy or uh, Saint Vince Saint Mary. Uh, Carmelo Anthony he played at Oak Hill Academy. Uh, LeBron playing at uh, Saint Vince Saint Mary and a lot of other NBA stars. But uh, I was in the same league as them because yeah, I went to a private Christian school as well. Yeah. In Wichita. Um, and my coach was a uh, – he was a college basketball coach at first. Then he stepped down and went to the private schools. So when he was in college, coaching college basketball, he had all different types of connects, mm-hmm. you know. And so he was – it was a college basketball coach yeah. coaching a private high – you know, oh, private high school right. that yeah. we, we would we – would, uh, what is it called? Not draft, but uh, recruit, recruit yeah. uh, fifth year seniors. Mm-hmm. So, and, and we would recruit motherfucking people from out of the country, yeah. people from Texas, people from Florida. I've played with some of the best basketball players in their state, some of the best basketball players mm-hmm. in their country. And so, just that whole, you know, traveling. Yeah. Uh, just you know, not being not being looked at as because the the teams in the city they didn't like us because we did have those fifth year seniors, those guys from out of the country and out of the state that were you know helping our program, but at the same time getting them to where they needed to be. Yeah. This the city teams they didn't like us because we would beat them. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so it, it was just that feeling of the camaraderie. The going out on tournaments for a week, you know, you know, a week tournament, getting rings. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was a eighth in the eighth grade. I was playing JV at a high school level. Whenever I was a when I you know went into my freshman year, I was a you know I was playing JV and varsity. Like I said, with you know and practicing with some of the best basketball players where they're from, you know? Yeah. So, um, fuck, I kind of fucking just kind of started really? ranting off. No, bro, that's what it's about, <coughs> man. It's just all about your story. But, so, yeah. like, 
siblings growing up. I know yeah. you got a brother. Yep. Is that your only sibling? Shout out Kai Music. Uh, yeah, shout out Kai. We did a we did a dope little song together too. Banger man, yeah, banger man. y'all. My brother, yeah, he just dropped an EP and Chatty Bobby is the only feature on it. Yeah, so I'll, we'll put the link in the description so y'all yeah, check it out. They they killed it. They killed yeah. it. But yeah, I got I got one one technically one brother. I mean te- technically, I got two younger twin brothers. I got one older brother named Chris. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Is it on your dad's side? Yeah, okay. yeah. So my dad was a whore. Yeah, shout out to all the whores. You know what I mean? Do you have any relationship with them? Do you talk to them? Any? It's cra- I wish. Yeah. I wish. It's it's crazy. We all live in the same city. Oh wow. We all live in the same city, but don't like we don't like whenever my dad was telling me about the you know his brother dying and shit, and I came and the funeral. I was asking him, like, where the fuck is Chris at, man? Like I ain't seen him mm-hmm. forever. You know, just things. Yeah. He got, he, he, he has his, my dad and him weren't getting along at the moment. Gotcha. So, you know, they, he wasn't there. But yeah, I got, I got, I got an older brother, two twin baby brothers. And then I have a younger brother, Kai. And then I have two sisters. So Kai's the only one that's in your life. But my two sisters are. Okay, cool. They're, they're, okay. they're, 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 they are. And then my brother, Kai, he, yeah, it's us three. Well, them three and then me. Yeah. Um, and then we all got the same dad, same mom. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, that's that's uh that's it as far as like talking and being in each other's yeah. lives. So, so you you and your mom probably had a really close relationship growing up because she was the one yeah playing both roles basically, right? Right, right. And you, yeah, I would I would say that and my my grandmother and my mm-hmm. grand and my papa C. Yeah. Uh, Cause my mom was young when she had me. Yeah. You know, so she had, she needed help. Mm-hmm. So all throughout my life, mm-hmm. I've lived with my mom. I've lived with my grandma. I've lived with my mom and my grandma at the same time. Yeah. Um, I've made dumb choices in in middle school, thinking that I was, you know, you know, a hard little gangbanger little kid. You know, but right. my mom, you know, took me out of that. Moved me down with my grandma and my grandpa, and you know they they straightened me out. That that country life, the country living, is is what really fucking opened up my eyes and straightened me the fuck out. My grandma, you know, saying, you know, you, you're gonna you're gonna need to get a job when you graduate. You're gonna need to do this when you graduate. No, I'm going to the NFL. No, I'm I'm going to do this. You know what I mean? My grandma and my grandpa, they really, you know, opened my eyes to what's important. I, I, I lived in a trailer with my grandma and my grandpa. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, so, what part of Kansas was this? This was out by Halstead. Okay. So, like, on the out, like, here, Halstead, small town. Yeah. On the outside was the country, nothing but open fields, freaking corn, you know, wheat. Yeah. Dirt roads, all that. Um so we lived on the outside of Halstead in, in a trailer and everything. And just just being out there and living that life, really, it you know, it opened up my eyes to be more appreciative of the things that you do have, you know yeah, what I mean? Sure. And then when those things do come, you'll really appreciate it, you know, yeah. more. When you said you played one year of football in high school, did you just, you just didn't, you just wasn't fucking with it? Like, after that, you just was like, so, was it coaches or was it just? So, this is the crazy thing. And I know your favorite player, one of your favorite players is Barry Sanders. Yep. That's how my dog knows me, man. Check this. That's my favorite player of all time. Seriously. And this is going to blow your mind. Yeah. Whenever my mom took me out of her house and moved me down to Wichita with my grandma and my grandpa, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Halstead, yeah, you know, uh, but I was still going into a school called Word of Life, which is a private Christian school. Still driving into Wichita from out there, and uh, so my gr- my mom took me out, put me into Word of Life. Mm-hmm. When they put me into Word of Life, I was in the eighth grade. Yeah, Word of Life has an eight man football team, not eleven man. Oh wow! See, in Kansas City, it's about football. In the eighth yeah. grade, I was like, "Yo, I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to college, I'm gonna go to the NFL, I'm gonna play for the Chiefs." Yeah, that was my that was my fucking. Of course. Didn't work out. Now I'm down here, word of life. 
and they recruit me. They turn it into a, they turn it from, oh, he's in trouble. Let's get him down here or whatever to, mm-hmm. oh, you play football? You play, you play linebacker? Yeah, I played running back, fullback, and tight end. I was going to say, I could see, I was going to say fullback. Yeah. And the, like you could. Yeah, I love hitting people, man, especially yeah. t- through the hole and then every once in a while give me a little touchdown, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, But, yeah, th- that in the eighth grade. So, now, you know, they they transfer that from, you know, oh, he's in trouble to let's put him on a scholarship. So, now my school's paid for at this private Christian school. Just got to play football. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm like, heck, yeah, I'm down. And they're like, well, the coach is here. We'll, we'll bring him in so you can meet him and everything. In comes this this black dude with a bald head. I didn't know who he was. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but then they introduce him, introduce <coughs> him, and he's like, "My name is uh, uh, Coach Sanders." I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me, dude?" His brother Byron Sanders uh-huh. coached the team, and oh, this wow. dude Byron, like, is it, it, his first brother. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Byron, you can look him up on Google. He I've played heard, for. I've heard, I mean, I've heard about Byron Sanders. He went in because of being a. He's guy. the older one. He's yeah. the older brother, and he was the one that went to the NFL first to Chicago Bears, had an injury, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So uh, whenever you know, I, I met him. My mom, you know, do you want to do? It? Do you want to do? It? Like, yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah, that's Barry Sanders' brother. Yeah, I'm playing for him. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, we was trash. We were trash. Was he not a good coach? Oh, bro. Horrible. Really? Horrible. What was it about him? He just No emotion. No discipline. No. He wasn't disciplined. Oh, him. no. He'd be disciplined. He just didn't have the. No yelling. No, no, no. Motivation. Yeah, bro. Yeah. None of that. I mean, all right, guys. Yeah. Today's going to be a good. How day. do you even play with an eight man team? What, <laughs> what positions do you not use? It, it's. Uh, so you have. You, instead of having three linebackers, would you have two or something? No, you have one – so, like, on offense, you would have not the full line. Okay. So, like, a center and two guards or something? Yeah, center and two guards and maybe one tight end. It's almost like arena league or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then the running back. Yeah. The running back can literally be like, oh, I'm, I'm running back this play. Psych, bitch, I'm fucking quarterback the next play. That's crazy. Seriously. Quarterback can play, running back, you know, multiple uh, positions. I think we got, like – I think there's, like, one – receiver or two receivers maybe yeah it's really weird yeah yeah but it, i will say that it's much more fast pace yeah. more, a whole lot more points we're talking like yeah. 50 60 80 points yeah. putting up on the you know the scoreboard yeah um but yeah 11 man and, and eight man are two totally different ball games oh, bro, man. That's, that's crazy that changes it up for sure yeah so um let's let's switch over to your music like, like, what got you so much into music? When did that start? Like, as far as like, just uh, as far as just you get when you when you grew up. Like, what was you listening to growing up in like in the fu- school? So the like first that? thing, the first as far as like uh, rap or R and B or anything, I was listening to the radio ninety five point seven, the vibe mm-hmm. in Kansas City, mm-hmm. and then you know listening to the radio, really getting into like. Uh, MTV, watching the MTV 106 in Park, mm-hmm. that show really, oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, really opened up my my uh, my my catalog ears to everybody, different types mm-hmm. of music, you know, um, um, that BT or that was on BET, yeah, uh, VH1, you know, yeah. all that stuff. It was Earth. back when they actually played music. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. And you know, I was really listening to. Uh, just rap, really. So that's what it, that's what it always was, even back then. Yeah. yeah, I mean, was you a big fan? Was you being from Kansas City? Was Tech Nine big with you? Oh, yeah. huge, yeah. huge! You see Tech Nine in the Walmart. Yeah. Back in the day, like before he, like when I was in middle school, I had friends that would come to school the next day, be like, "Dude, look who we met! Freaking, yeah. we met Tech Nine." You know what I mean? So, cause see, you're younger than me. How old did you say you were? Twenty seven, twenty eight. Oh yeah, yeah, 28. you're ten years younger than me. So yeah, yeah. so but still. You're still in that. You're in that age group to where you've seen the music industry from both sides. Mm-hmm. 
Spe- saying that meaning you was talking about watching BET yeah. and in and VH1 MTV and stuff and but but and, and to now where it's you know but right <clears throat> it's definitely that's how you that's how you learned about all the music back yep. then yep yep yeah. when you looked at the magazines oh Source yeah Source magazine Double XL magazine Murder Dog stuff like that yep and yep. Tech Nine was I remember I was working it was 2003 when I found out about Tech Nine or 2002 my buddy. Pudgy that I worked with at this place called Media Play, which was like Best Buy kind of. Yeah. And he kept talking about this guy named Tech Nine. Tech Nine. He was talking about the Angelic album. Yeah. The first album. Yeah. He said, "Bro, this guy's rapping to a machine gun." <laughs> at the beginning, you know, like the little yeah. second thing. Yeah. And I heard it, and I was like, "Bro, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life." Because I wasn't even rapping <coughs> yet. I was just buying every rap CD. I was studying the music. And essentially, really that's what it is. Essentially, that's yeah. what it is. It's studying like a motherfucker. For sure. For sure. And that's that's all I was doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, T- Tech Nine's one of the goats, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He is, yeah, considered the best fucking number one independent artist in the world. Yeah, for sure. For real. So, th- you started listening to music and stuff like that, and then sports was, school was done, with, like when you decided you wasn't going to do School. I know you got you got kids. Yes, sir. Did you yes, how, like how old was you when you had when when you started having kids? Yeah, man. My first, too? my first. Yeah. So that's <laughs> that's yeah. That that right there is crazy because I had just. So when I, I was going to Johnson County Community College, for mm-hmm. a little bit, came back home, to Andover, and it was like a Christmas break, yeah. and I was like. I ain't going back. Yeah. I ain't going back. Just never, just never went back. Yeah. Stay and hooked up with uh, my my son's mom. I won't say baby mama, but my son's mom. Yeah. Um, and, you know, dated for her for a while and end up having my first son. And that's when, you know, because prior before that, man, I was, you know, I was partying like a mug, just doing course, all different yeah. types of stuff, drinking and, you know, just, I was young. You yeah. Know? But I first had my first son at 22, and when that went down, I was like, when I first found out she was pregnant, I was like, I'm done. I, I got to focus on, you know, I, I have my son. Like, that's really what hit me was I'm having a son. Yeah. You know, not just a kid, but I'm having a, a, a baby boy who eventually, you know, is going to grow up to be a man yeah. like me. Well, and probably, too, going through what you went through as a kid, not having your father oh around. Oh, my gosh. You didn't want to. Yes. Leave him in that same scenario. I'm That's sure. when he was yeah. in the belly, and when he was out, when he came out, I whispered in his ear. I said, "I will never leave you, mm-hmm. ever." I did that with all my kids. I will never leave them, ever, because yeah. uh, I know how that feels. I know the wandering, and the you know, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people on on here are gonna be watching this. You know, they know what that that feeling feels like, yeah. man. And and it, there's just something. I believe that I've heard there's something chemically in the brain that's yeah. missing yeah. without the affirmation of a father. Yeah. You know, there, there's, sure. there's affirmation that comes from a mom and a dad yeah. only. Yeah. You, there's a, you know, you can't just, you can't get all affirmation as a boy from your mom. Right, you have to sure. have, there's got to be something from, you know, with your dad, you know yeah, what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, that, that, that's, that's a big part of the reason why, yeah. I, I, I wanted I, to make sure you were there for your kids like that. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. What, what age was that? That was 22. Okay, so yeah. I was 22. So. so yeah, he's what, six now? Yeah, five. 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 So he'll be six in October next yeah, month. Yeah. So. Yeah. so you started doing that and you started doing the family thing and then, um, you're still like. At what point did you did you start to find like the independent? Music? Man, what I was, got you into that. Like to what you went, where are you yeah, at now? Yeah, right. It, it, it that that is that right there is a that's crazy because we. I was just talking to my brother about it the other day. How we. It was Ryan. And, like Ryan made the video the other day talking about. Country rap wasn't even fucking cool, until. I fucking did it. Mm-hmm. It it wasn't cool, mm-hmm. and, and you know what I mean. 
I mean, it might have been cool to other people, mm-hmm. but on a larger scale, where we're at yeah. now, Ryan, Ryan made it fucking cool. Yeah. When I discovered Ryan, <coughs> it's like all these other other people started popping up. Yeah, Adam, mm-hmm. you know, Broadnax, mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. fucking everybody who I react to. And then even going down onto a smaller scale, there's guys that are rapping that I, uh, you know, I just, I, d- I didn't n- know that, you know, I didn't know that they fucking rapped. Yeah. You know, uh, so, I don't know. It, it's, it's, a, uh, it's kind of a, an overlap. Yeah. Because I go back to, because I, I and I've said this before, I stopped listening to mainstream rap at Wiz Khalifa, yeah, ASAP Rocky, fucking, who the fuck else? I mean, I've always listened to Wayne. I still listen to Wayne. Oh, uh, Wayne's one of the guys. You know, sure. but, like, I just, I stopped, I stopped listening to that radio music, if yeah. that makes any sense. The 20, 20 teens. Yeah. Yeah. Time frame. Yeah. Exactly. And it really my adult years. Probably honestly, two thousand sixteen is whenever I really started dabbing into and really saying, fuck the mainstream shit. Mm-hmm. I see what the hell is really going on. Mm-hmm. And Ryan really opened up my my eyes and other people's eyes to like the whole label thing. Yeah. Signing yeah. to a label, signing to, you know, you know, all that shit and how they can fuck you. You know? What, what was the first song from church that you heard that, that like it was just something randomly you saw on the internet? No, my, it so something? so one of my one of my uh, old friends, he ain't a, he ain't a friend of mine anymore. Mm-hmm. He's the one who introduced me to okay. Ryan's music, and at first, I was just like, dude, you keep playing this dude over and over and over and over. And you keep talking about him. You're cutting your hair like him. Mm-hmm. Like, what is it? And I'd heard, heard, mm-hmm. not listened. I heard songs of him, but not really listened. Yeah. And when I, re- it was the uh, Rolling Stone mm-hmm. and Holler Boy. Yeah. When, when I listened to those songs. Yeah. Yeah. Dog, Which I, are two of his biggest yeah, songs right. today. Right. And White Lightning. When yeah. he, that, there's a, that there's a, there's a verse in there where he, where he says, uh, he says he's doing it for basically doing it for the underdogs. Yeah. Doing it for the people who fucking, you know, are underdogs, man. Yeah. They don't look like they're rappers. They don't fucking, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so when he did, when he said that, man, I was like, yo, I'm with it. Yeah. And I want to, I want to, I want to do this not only for Ryan, but for other independent artists who are cold, who are actually putting in, you know, the work and the grind. So that's when you started going through the down the wormhole. That was yeah. It's considered country rap, but a lot of it's not country rap per se. It's just it's put in that category. Right. I, I usually call it independent. Yeah, for sure. Just independent for sure. music, independent rap. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you said Leroy's tied into your story too with. Uh, how did that? What was? You, what is this tie? So, in? Lee, so Leroy is really what put the stamp on Star. stamp. You <laughs> damn right. He he really put that stamp. Literally, literally, he uh he put that stamp on on me. You know, saying yeah, for real. I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking you know promote, and I'm gonna fucking do reactions, and that kind of ties into Simba. But okay. Uh, um, going to Bonfire in the Mud, yeah. meeting Leroy, seeing Leroy perform, and then me getting back home and him being like, yo, I forgot what project it was. It might have been after, a little bit after Dose, whatever he was working on, on album, after album Dose. Yeah. Uh, he was really pushing it. And he's like, yo, I want you to share the fuck out of this shit mm-hmm. till you annoy me. I want you to annoy me. So that that's what I did. Yeah. And hell, I annoyed myself because I started doing. I started promoting Leroy. Started promoting 
you know, other artists on, on Instagram and really pushing every day. Yeah. And then I was like, man, all right, well, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, annoying myself. Like I said, I, I got to fucking step it up. What yeah. can I do next? Yeah. And as I'm thinking about that, days are going. Ryan's dropping little videos, you know, on Instagram about Simba. Oh, Simba's Simba. Who who the hell is this Simba dude? I look him up. Oh, he fucking reacts. Yeah. Well, hell yeah. Yeah. That's what I can fucking do. That's what I'll do. I can do that. Yeah. And I literally just I watch I watch and I still watch Simba shit because he I've told him before that dude. He, you know, he is the blueprint. Yeah. He's a blueprint. And, you know, I took what he was doing and made it my own, not copying, made yeah. it my own. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just, just did that. And that's what I've been doing for the last, you know, year, year and a half now. Going on two. It's so freaking crazy. It goes by that's fast wild, as fuck. Man. Yeah. But then, and then, yeah, doing that, um, you know, that kind of leads into Simba. Simba really uh, um, helped me out on that. Um, so so you would you say that Simba's the one, I don't want to say he's the first reactor, I don't say that. Yeah. Was he the one that got that going, per se, in the, in, to you? To me, in, in my view, when it comes to... The independence? Yeah, the independent scene. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Ryan, Ryan really pushing and putting out Ryan's music as far as, like, being and looking different. Yeah. Compared to, you know, all the other, all the other reactors. But the thing is, I didn't even know what reacting was. Right, right. Until Ryan showed, you know, Simba. And I was like, what the yeah. fuck is this dude doing? He's, okay, he's reacting. Is that it? Like that's that's yeah. fucking and not saying that it's easy because it's right because it was just you not knowing right right I didn't know it was a thing and, and it's ignorant but it's not it's not I don't mean that in a bad way right, it's right. Just, you're just not you're just unaware mm -hmm, mm -hmm. basically and that's yeah. the first at first glance it does kind of seem kind of weird right well Looking it, at, you know what I mean something like that because I had never seen I ain't never seen I never seen anything like that before and then yeah. like. To do that and then people to be happy about it, like, oh, dude, like, damn, fuck yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this yeah. dude's reacting to my song. Like, hell yeah. So, yeah, just, just seeing Simba doing that and Simba really, you know, gave me the confidence to fucking do it. Leroy, when he said, help me out, promote yeah. my shit, yeah. he got the fucking ball rolling. Yeah. And then it's like, well, what else can we fucking do? Yeah. Simba, oh shit, hell yeah! And now you know I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm doing that. Um, I have a, I've, a, I got an artist that I help make his merchandise. Really? And we, I didn't yeah, know that. yeah. See, oh, no. that's another thing that I, I got. I've been trying to do a, you know, not too much, but kind of trying to keep myself busy. And this, this whole thing has been, uh, with, uh, with Tater. I'm gonna go ahead and say it, Tater. That's that's the guy that I'm I'm you know helping out as far as merchandise and shirts and whatever he wants to come up with. I work. I I had made it my my vision to offer up an opportunity for independent artists that don't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. That if they want a shirt or merchandise or something to rock. I would be that guy to offer that, help you out on a lower, you know. Oh, okay. Well, that's dope. You know what I mean? And yeah. just, just trying to be a blessing and help people out. Doesn't mean that you got to rock with me forever. Yeah, yeah. No, you yeah. know, this is just something that's going to help you get off the ground. And, you know, have, you know, if, if there are, are some people out there that like your music or like what you're doing, and they do want to support you as far as like rocking some, some merch, you have that ability to to do that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah, man, freaking, just been freaking, just been trying to freaking stay on the reaction game and even uh, uh, going to the, to the events, the concert content, man. That's, yeah. that's one of my, one of the things that, 
I, I wanted to get into and I have been doing uh, was the concert content. I've been to multiple church concerts. I went to the, the tailgate, multiple tailgating to uh, tailgating tall boy events. Yeah. The only thing I haven't got to do yet is um, Redneck Rave. I would love to. Yeah, and, and love to salute to Justin, there. man, because I, my plans were to try to make this one. Shout out to Tubbs. He was trying yeah. to, he said, I could roll yeah, there. Shit, yeah. But it just, when that weekend happened, it just happened this week. I had a whole bunch of other stuff already scheduled that was like paid stuff that mm-hmm. I needed to get done. Right. Um, but we're definitely going to get one, make a, uh, make, a point to hit up a redneck right for sure. For sure. Shout out to Justin. Yep, right. shout out to Justin Tom. But yeah, man, that's that's that uh that is my vision now. You know, now I'm down here mm-hmm. this week. Gonna be working on a, a intro for uh and it should be out by the time this Oh yeah, there's because this will be this will be in the can for a little bit because we got some other ones, but yeah. um before we go Kansas Rebel Man. Talk about how that, how you thought that up. Like, what was, like. Where that came from? Yeah, where it came from. Okay. So, uh, Kansas Rebel Man. Uh, I am, I'm from Kansas. You're damn right. For sure, of course. You're damn right. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I'm from, I'm from Kansas, and I wanted to rep, you know, where I'm from, because it's, it's, it's crazy, because I, I, I study, man, and I learn Things from not only you, Squinch, Ryan, you know, but really, you know, I took that trait that Ryan has as far as loving his hometown mm-hmm. and loving his city. Uh, that's what I wanted. I wanted to rep Kansas, really. Mm-hmm. And, and all in all, that's what I wanted to do was rep Kansas, Um that's you know that's where I'm from, and then the rebel, the rebel man part. Um, on account of the re- the whole rebel flag thing, that that's a big that's big because it, it's kind of what what was going on politically in the mm-hmm. world, yeah. And then me doing research on the flag, mm-hmm. knowing you know the truth about the flag, mm-hmm. and. Um, just learning from people who look like me who support it because it's real. Yeah. It's a real thing. People who because look you're, like, because you're mixed race. Right. You're, yeah, you're right. Black right. And white. Right. And so. And you catch? Uh, you did you catch flack for that initially? For oh that? yeah, I still do. Hundred yeah. percent, still do. That, that's a that's just that's one thing where when I accepted it and I really took it on and you know kind of made it a part of my brand. Yeah. Um, I, I, I accepted it. I was like, there's going to be people who look like me, who don't like me. There's going to be people who don't look like me, who don't like me for it, you know? But then there's a lot of people out there who genuinely support me and love me for it, you know? And, and then there's those people who they still love me, but they wonder, they're just wondering, like, I have family members that are just, what the heck is wrong? Like, what what is going on? You know? And I have to sit down and explain to them. But, uh, yeah, that, that kind of the, the rebel man part at the beginning was, you know, politically what was going on. And then I tied it into the music. And as far as like Ryan, that dude, that dude opened up my mind when it came to that yeah, and how he was repping it. You know, the dude has it tatted on his arm. And I think the flag is beautiful. I mean, everybody has their opinions. I think the flag is beautiful. It's, it, it, I love the colors. I love how it's de- designed. Yeah. Everything, all, all that. Um, you know, but how I tied it in to, to the music part mm-hmm. was coming from and looking at Ryan's standpoint and taking it as he's, he's a rebel. Mm-hmm. And if we was, you know, considering where where he's from, born and raised, mm-hmm. if we used to go back and he was alive back in the day, he would be a rebel. Yeah. Now we're here in the twenty first century, mm-hmm. and we're we're on a mu- now. I'm thinking on, on a music level. Yeah. 
Yeah. He's a rebel to the mainstream mm -hmm. music. Yeah. He's the rebel. He's the guy that says, I can, motherfucker, I, I can do this. I don't fucking need a, a, a Lamborghini. Yeah. I don't need all this shit that you're throwing in my face. Yeah. You know what I mean? I do it for the underdogs. I do it for the kids who are being told that they ain't going to fucking amount to anything by their teachers, their parents, yeah. their friends. Yeah. You know, uh, I just, and I took that and I was like, yo, I'm, I'm the fucking, I'm, I'm the rebel to the fucking mainstream too. I'm, I'm, I'm Kansas rebel man. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a rebel to whenever it comes to these fucking, po uh, not podcasts, but, uh, reactions. Yeah. For sure. I, I'm the guy who, you know, everybody fucking saying, uh, oh, almost yeah. I almost talked some shit. I almost talked some shit. <laughs> we might have to cut that out. <laughs> no, I almost no. talked some shit. I'm yeah. going to be quiet, but... Just all the days with the daughters and naysayers. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And then just, you know, uh, the whole mainstream thing. Them them thinking that, you know, this is the only way. No, man, you can fucking be a rebel and you can stand on your own. You can make this shit fucking happen. And it doesn't make you racist. It don't make you racist at all. That's the whole divide and I get people have their opinions about it. Right. And I'm not disparaging anybody's opinion. Right, right. At all. Right. I'm just speaking from Chad to Jordan. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Letting you set tell the meaning of it to you. Right. You know what I mean? And anybody that knows you clearly knows that you're not racist. Hell no. Dude, I, yeah, and this That's is what trips me out about, you know what I'm saying? When right. You get those kind of Right. And and said. and that's been my new like my new goal. My new what I want to come out of this um is to have eventually, man, I want I want to have and hopefully I do. I know that I do, actually. Uh have People who look like me, not tripping about the fucking flag, not tripping yeah. about it, you know. All they were, you know, all they they see where I'm coming from as far as it, it's it's standing your ground and and not not going with what everybody else is doing, and because at the end of the day. That flag means, I mean, simple as plain, fuck the government. Yeah. Fuck tyranny. Yeah. Fuck all that bullshit that they try that they're trying to do. You know. I just I f rebellion yeah, against sure. what the fuck everybody else has been doing and proving it and showing. You can against, do it this way against the grain. Right, right, yeah. and just because they say it's fucking racist, don't mean that it's racist. Yeah. Cause I'm I'm a black dude over here, repping the fuck out of it. I love the flag and people who people other people who love the flag that don't look like me love me. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it is what it is. Yeah, man. So what's next for you, Kansas? To so put a bow on this dope ass interview. I appreciate you for doing this. Oh no, thank you for of for course, having bro. me. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, but you know, at, at, shoot. At the end of the day, what all all of what I'm trying to do is concert content. I've been doing that. Reactions. I've been doing that. Mm. Um, and now down here, about to make an intro with old Fathead. You're damn right. Yeah, man. Shout out to Fathead. So Shout who out, knows? Man. Who knows what I might get into? I might get into some music. I, I might we, get it, bro. <laughs> I might get into it. You know what I mean? I think you should, dog. And, and you know, your energy is definitely there. Yeah, I know you could do it. Yeah, and it's and it's and it's. Thank you for saying that because yeah. it's just comments like that, and then fathead. I and I told him. I said, dude, you're pulling something out of me that I didn't even know was there. But it, you, I, I get that. But you're so passionate about the music that. People like myself and Fathead and Church and Leroy and right. Adam and all that brought next, all of us create. Right. That's why I think you would be dope at it because the passion for it is there. 
So like surrounding yourself with those people yeah. in those scenarios is going to naturally pull that out of you yeah. because you're such a avid fan of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So like that, I, I see what you said about how it surprised you, but it doesn't surprise me just because I know how much. Like we were listening to O&E stuff on the way down here. Yeah, shout out O&E, O-N-E yeah. man, for real. Yeah, and Bangers. I was you hear some of the new stuff that he was doing. And I just love seeing you get hype about it because that's how yeah. I am. Yeah, You know what yeah. I mean? When I hear my buddy's songs, when Leroy sends me something or one sends me something or yeah, I hear a new single from, from – from John or Adam or, or whoever, Jelly, whoever, right. whoever it is. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Um, but, but yeah, man, just, uh, Hell yeah. Just keep doing what you're doing, bro. Pro- pro- well, you yeah, see, and, and now that, now that Chatty Bobby done motherfucking gave me a little bit of, uh, some uh-huh. motherfucking, hey, 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 you I know what I'm saying? Shit, shit. Hey, I'm, that, and, yeah. and that's, that's what I will say. When it comes to the writing, I think that I'll probably have to, you know, it's kind of like lifting weights. Yeah. I'm gonna have to fucking get consistent with it and and all that. So, yeah, Cam's real man might might be dabbling into, into some music, and I know that's gonna make some of y'all motherfucking mad. But it is what it is. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, mean, I appreciate you, man. Chat Arms TV. And, I appreciate uh, Cam's you real, too, man. Y'all be sure to subscribe to his YouTube, follow him on Instagram, all that good stuff, man. Bow. Um, we're about to get ready to do this podcast and shoot the shit. So, sir, appreciate yes, sir. You, Appreciate you, bro.